everybody. So we've talked about this on this channel enough, and, and I realize people get tired of me banging the same drums over and over again, but I do it because I keep hearing the same dumb shit out there. So let's get into it. Trump's presidency coincides with a rise in extreme mental distress among LGBT people, according to massive new study. This comes from September 25th, 2021 by Eric Dolan. This is from SciPost. Let me know if you guys can hear this and uh, we'll go from there. Extreme mental distress among LGBT people increased during Donald Trump's political rise and presidency according to new research published in the journal Economics and Human Biology. Trump became the Republican Party's presidential nominee in July 2016 and that same month he selected conservative Christian politician Mike Pence as his running mate. During his administration, Trump opposed legislation that sought to prevent discrimination against LGBT people by adding sexual orientation and gender identity to federal civil rights law. I was curious to know whether the average mental health among LGBT people worsened during the Trump presidency, as he and his administration were perceived as anti-LGBT, said study author Masanori Kuraki, an associate professor of economics at Arkansas Tech University. So I see everybody in chat posting this is obvious and shit, and I'm just going to say, like, no. Like, Anyone who's part of the LGBT knows this because this would be something we'd experience, but people on the outside of that, that's not necessarily something they would immediately go towards. Remember, one of the big paradigms that they were trying to sell with um, Trump and Pence was the idea that like Trump was a, was a um, supporter of the LGBT. He even made occasional little things towards it. Now, we'll be covering in a little bit what he specifically did with the LGBT, and none of it was supportive. But I can see from a normie perspective or from a, a cishet perspective, people being like, well, what did he do? Well, a lot of the stuff he did was stuff that was behind the scenes by putting really transphobic and really shitty people in very, very large positions of power. So let's get into it and kind of look at the data. For his study, Kuraki examined data collected from 2014 to early 2020 by the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, BRFSS, an annual survey conducted by the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, to gather information about risk factors and behaviors among adults. About 450,000 adults are interviewed each year, providing Kuraki with a sample size of approximately 1.06 million American adults. Damn, that's a big the number. They asked the respondents to indicate how many days during the past 30 days they considered their mental health to be not good. Those who gave the answer 30 were considered as experiencing extreme mental distress. Got it. Okay. So do you understand that? So they used this survey, this survey, their surveillance system they have to do an annual survey with the Center of Disease Control to look at risk factors. They interview 450,000 adults every year, which provided a sample size based on those four years of 1.06 million. That's a massive number. Tiamat, I can't make... I can't make it do that. I'm sorry. I know you want it differently. People can read. <laughs> You're killing me here. Um, so let's see what they found. The researchers found that LGBT people were more likely than non-LGBT people to report extreme mental distress even before Trump's presidency. But Kuraki observed a marked increase in extreme mental distress among LGBT people starting in early 2016. The findings suggest that the Trump administration possibly adversely affected mental health among LGBT people, Kuraki told SciPost. Yeah, so it looks like during those years, even beforehand in 2016 when it was happening, Trump's existence as a potential political member already was having demonstrable negative effects on LGBT folks. Extreme mental distress. As someone who transitioned during the Trump administration and has a partner who was non-binary during that, yeah, this kind of fits. Let's see what else we got. In 2014, 
the proportion of adults suffering from extreme mental distress was 7.7% for LGBT individuals and 4.8% for non-LGBT individuals. By 2019, that proportion had increased to about 12% for LGBT adults, while the proportion yep. for non-LGBT adults remained at about 5%. Moreover, the researchers found that LGBT people in states where Trump won experienced a larger increase in extreme mental distress compared to LGBT people living in states where Trump lost to Hillary Clinton. Before he became President of the United States, Trump was widely considered as an anti-LGBT presidential candidate, who would roll back critical legal protections if he was elected president. Since taking office, the Trump administration adopted a broad anti-LGBT agenda that threatened the rights of LGBT people, Kuroki wrote in his study. One second, I'm looking something up. State Equality Index, that sounds pretty useful. Let's look at that one. So we have the 2020 State Equality Index made by the Human Rights Campaign Human Rights Campaign for LGBT stuff. Let me bring this over here so you all can see it real quick. So real quick, just to let you know, so state scorecard. Let's look at this part. Okay. So I'm not going to go through all of this today, but I do want you guys to see this is... Finding good or bad bills, we'll have to look at what that is. But it's pretty easy to note that just as a glance, okay, so overall per year. Yeah, yeah, so depending on the area, parenting laws, religious relationships, yeah, okay. Non-discrimination laws, that's going to be low. Yeah, like no, if you're in a state um, that Trump won, this is garbage. Yeah, particularly we're looking at... The very the red is the bad bills introduced. Yep, bad bills that are introduced. With the I assume the blank part right up here is the introduced bills passed. So yeah, like yeah, more yeah. It, yeah okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um. So this is honestly, uh, human rights campaign is pretty well known, and this is probably a really good piece of data for people to look at more thoroughly. Um, because we do, like, yes, we have our experiences. Also, our experiences are absolutely backed by data, uh, which can be really helpful when we are actually, like, in an argument or trying to understand, like, what's going on with not just our personal experience, but the experience, you know, of people in general um, of our community. So let's see what their state scorecard said. Man, so let's go through the list based on what we're seeing here. Alabama, Ar or, uh, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California. There is all improvements here. Is that a, are the checkboxes representative of improvements, or are they representative of their our protections on the books? Uh, let me see. View details. Oh, here's a nice key. God, this is so easy. Um, Sir, guess law. Da da da. Honestly, this is a really good at a glance thing. If you need to know information about a state, like you're considered moving somewhere, but or think you want to know this. what like, your state let's, says, let's this is look a at a really state that resource. Trump won in 2016. Say, we could look at Michigan, or we could look at, oh uh, God, what were other purple states that he won? We could look at what other ones could we look at? Let's see, uh, who went for Trump in 2016? I'd have to look. I know Trump went got Arizona. Did Trump get yeah, Trump got Arizona. Pennsylvania is a good one. Yeah, yeah. So look at Arizona. Gender marker updates on identification. What does the uh, marker mean? What does that one mean? So kind of? Man, Arizona's not great. Yeah, Wisconsin, Florida. I know a few a few states that flipped on him and th during this last election. So, like, understand this. Like, what we're trying to point out, and I'll post this with all the normal links, but I need you guys to understand this is, like, just... 
The key here is not applied to the main page of cards. Okay, but where's the key for the cards? What What are you talking about? Don't let the fuckers confuse me. Yeah, there's no key here. No, no, the key. Tiamat, <laughs> I swear to God. Scroll down, scroll down. View detail. Yeah, the key is right on each state. It literally shows it. What are this you doing? This is the key for the thing. They just put it in that information block. I know it could be combined a little better, I'm sure, but... Yeah, yeah, these are the keys. What are you talking... I don't know what you're talking about, Tiamat, so I'm going to move on. So the point being is, is that, yeah, we can see states where there are not actual policy decisions that protect LGBT people, and we can see that those states most likely had higher turnouts based on this research, right? So... Based on the hypothesis that anti-LGBT sentiments and policies might have led to higher levels of mental distress among LGBT people, this study has examined whether exceptional levels of mental distress have become more common among LGBT people, relative to non-LGBT people, following Trump's ascendance to the presidency in early 2016. The results indeed revealed a concerning rise in poor mental health among LGBT people after Trump's presidency became a real possibility. But the BRFSS collects cross-sectional, rather than longitudinal, data. In other words, the survey acquires a new sample of individuals every year, rather than repeatedly questioning the same individuals over time. This limits the ability to draw conclusions about cause and effect. The finding is not causal, and we cannot confidently attribute the rise in mental distress among LGBT to Trump or his administration, Kuraki said. So what I'll say to that is, is that I can't say it's causal either, but I can say it's pretty goddamn likely. So let's let's explain why. So we all know based on data that the level of hate crimes towards people of color and LGBT people went up during Trump. The number of shooters went up during Trump. We know the fact that every state that Trump had a rally in had a spike in crime, specifically against people, you know, against marginalized people. So it stands to reason that you okay? Yeah, it's fizz in your nose. <laughs> a little spicy. A little spicy. Got it. Um, ginger beer. Um. So if you're in a state that Trump regularly visited because he wanted to win, and you're in a state where there aren't a lot of protections for you, spoiler, your stress is going to go up immensely. And it's going to get progressively worse because you're going to start seeing more and more laws put in that are going to be either affecting you negatively or are going to continue fighting every way at which way to make sure you get actual equality, right? Um, again, let's finish this part up and then we'll get into the stuff that Trump did. Kuraki believes that future research should examine whether the mental health of LGBT people improves under the new Biden administration. In contrast to the Trump administration, the Biden administration has already signaled that protecting the rights of LGBT people is important, Kuraki wrote. If presidents affect LGBT people's mental health, then we should expect that the extreme mental distress gap between LGBT people and non-LGBT people to narrow under the Biden presidency. The study, The Rise in Extreme Mental Distress Among LGBT People During Trump's Rise and Presidency, was published online June 23, 2021. So again, if you ever need to find the stuff that we talk about on stream, look below. It's all going to be there. It's always in the um, in the uh, the stream links doc. I can't post them directly on anything anymore because one time when we did it, apparently it decided the word porn was a thing and I got a ding against the channel for it. Um... I, yes, it was a thing specifically talking about the OnlyFans situation, and that actually got a warning against the channel because they thought it was a porn link when it was a fucking, like, slate link. Yeah, yeah. I will never stop being salty about this. So understand that, okay, so we have one study, but a pretty compelling study. And so you ask the question, okay, but what about the actually, like, specific idea? Like, what did Trump do that was so scary to LGBT people? Well, one, he's a fascist. Like, we just know this. Numerous content creators have gone through, looked at him versus Umberto Echo's 14 characteristics. He is a fascist. Full stop. It also stands to reason that 
because of his behavior, he pushed a lot of really negative memes, a lot of really like negative fucking um, stereotypes out there about lots of people, including people who are physically disabled, people who were racist, or people people of various races. And if you're a person of color or an LGBT person or another minority, refugees, oh yeah, they're going to come here as rapists and with knives and shit. Yeah, all of that stuff is going to create an air of fear where people are going to be more likely to act out. And depending on the state, so let's say, for example, New York, probably less likely. Very blue state, very, very um, heterogeneous. It's not a homogenous single race or group area. There's very large like group di- the group dynamics there. You don't get that stuff as much. I guarantee you New York's hate crimes are lower than, say, Mississippi's. Unless there's a way in which they catalog them different, I don't know on that one. But so here's what happened. We've talked about this on stream before, and I'm going to talk about it again. You have something you want to add? Um, I did want to touch on on this a little bit. Sure, go ahead. Go through. Um, so Fantasine uh, Moon. Personally, the fact that it's taking an official report like this to actually get this info out there is frustrating. Um, it's almost like, gee, we told you so. Um, and the straights go, gosh, I had no idea you were feeling like this. Um, I think one of the tragic things that especially happened was, is we start detailing all of what happened in this track record. It starts making more and more sense why this stuff isn't broadly known or well known. And I think the last time we saw data was it like Americans, only like two in 10 Americans know somebody who's trans isn't right um now it's one in yeah it's one in five it's 20 percent. like yeah one in five persons know someone who is trans which is massive improvement so it's a massive number but also that other you know chunk of people that other four out of five don't know somebody and so when we start looking at where they get the information from okay then things get really weird because we have a lot of a lot of hate campaigns going on right now um, so let's, so let's look at you this. Know, so let's go into this. I think so this, this is going to start. The, yeah. Yeah. This starts at the bottom. So we're going to start at the bottom. Cause this is, this is 2017, right? Minutes after mm-hmm. Donald Trump was sworn into office, any mention of LGBTQ community was erased from the white house department of state and department of labor websites. So that alone just scrubbed out think all about sorts that. of shit. The, the, like within days, like minutes of becoming the president does that. And, and just to note, like, there were various levels that were, you know, dealing with this topic, looking at it, okay, seeing how it affected things like labor, housing, statistics, all of that stuff. That was ab- that was absolutely happening, and that got scrubbed. So next we have, um, I'm going to go with the really big, the big hits. Um, February 22nd, 2017, with help from An- uh, Attorney General Sessions, President Trump rescinded Title IX protections for transgendered students in, nat- in, in the nation's schools. Let's see... Let's see. What's some other really big ones? Oh, under his uh, proposed budget for the U.S. Congress, the Trump administration offered to cut HIV and AIDS research funding under the National Institute of Health. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just let's redo it. Let's just do dumber Reaganism. Like that's that's what that comes down to. So President Trump in May 4th, 2017. What is Title IX? We can look that up real quick. Title nine. Yeah, I did read your comment. It's okay to be frustrated with this stuff and irritated and angry that it is the way it is, by the way. Okay, so Title That's Nine thing. Title Nine is a federal civil law, rights law in the United States that was passed as part of Title uh, part, part of the Education Amendments of 1972. It prohibits sex based discrimination in any school or other educational program that receives federal money. Um my belief is what they changed was in under the Obama administration, there was a modification to add in LGBT identities and that so I'm not, got erased by Trump, but I think it's back in order because of Biden. So I'm not sure on this particular one, but to give a little bit of context, uh, one of the ways that various places in our country have dealt with trying to get uh, you know, sexual orientation, gender identity on the books 
is by interpreting uh, various discrimination laws differently. Okay. Because in that way, you know, if the courts were like, hey, we interpret this and here's the precedent and here's, you know, the case law for this, then that would be what would be followed by other places. Okay. Yeah. And that is almost easier in a lot of ways than trying to get laws passed. So they would interpret uh, various ones. You know, I, True I can't cap. Um, dox myself for this, but there are some states that looked at uh, sex and said for sex based discrimination, this is absolutely included. This absolutely includes uh, gender identity and sexual orientation in sex based discrimination that absolutely is in that encompassing. OK, so. And, and obviously, if that's not codified necessarily, it's a little bit difficult. But this is some of the ways that our country's been trying to, like, get around this shit. Um, so. To another point, uh, I actually agree with Tia Matt in chat. Uh, to clarify, I use pernicious because the fact that we operate in capitalism reinforces it and brings it back where where it gets scrubbed away. Yeah, um, earlier in the chat, Marionette, dear friend of mine and I love, but I, I do disagree with this notion that capitalism is inherently fascistic. I don't think that's true. I think that capitalism is a very good breeding ground for various types of poor behavior, whether that is a libertarian hellscape, right, where the cops have to yell subway eat fresh before they shoot you, or something in a much more militaristic, fascistic way. I don't know if it leads necessarily to one to, to a specific outcome. Rather, I think that it creates the breeding ground for lots of shitty outcomes. That would be my argument. Um, yeah. So that would be my thoughts on capitalism. Feel free to respond, Marionette. I'll, I'll look when I get a chance. Um, let's see here. What else did Trump do? Trump, uh, the Trump administration grants White House press credentials to a reporter from Infowars, a conspiracy outlet that regularly peddles dangerous, offensive anti-LGBT content. True. Um, President Trump declines to issue a presidential proclamation designating June as the LGBTQ Pride Month breaking with eight years of precedent sent by Pro President Barack Obama to honor and support LGBTQ Americans during Pride Month. Yep, just just first year out, just fuck it. Um, Department of Education invites focus on the family. By the way, um, Illuminati, oh Illuminati just put out a video about them, focus on the family. The Family yeah, Research Council is also really bad. Oh yeah, they're both really toxic bad. as shit. I'm not going to go into them here, but they are a big fucking problem. Uh Um, let's see here. Trump's connections to Vladimir Putin. Putin, by definition, has been anti-LGBT. Russia is awful for human rights. Just mm. fucking terrible. We're not even out of 2017 yet. Yeah, oh, we're God. not even out of 2017. Okay. Uh. President Trump bans transgender service members from serving in any capacity in the U.S. military. Oh, no, they are child abuse apologists. And if you actually look, a lot of the people they overlap with in QAnon have actually done demonstrable harm in actually finding traffickers. So, you know, go off. Um, that's 17. Let's look at 18. Maybe 18 got better. I mean, the Department of that. Health and Human Services creates a new department that shields healthcare workers who refuse to treat LGBTQ patients or those living with HIV by calming moral and religious uh, uh, objection. See, Marionette said real quick, it engenders fascistic ideology from the base level by the way it relies on creating marginalized other classes along arbitrary lines defined by the prejudice of those in power. But that isn't necessarily fascistic, Marionette. I think you're wrong in your definitions. What I would say is that's inherently autocratic or aristocratic. Fascism is different than those systems. Fascism is a one is a is an incredibly toxic and rhetoric based version of those systems. Rather than being enforced by God, it is enforced by the people's will, so to speak, and by a very very toxic set of rhetoric. Rather than by God's will, or because the church says so, or because we have all the lands and swords. To me, I think it breeds a new form of aristocracies rather than specifically fascistic things. Though with certain pushing, it obviously goes to that. That would that would be my my thoughts. Um, following Billy Graham's death, Trump overlooks his anti-LGBT record and praises him. Great. Love that for us. Um, the Department of Housing and Urban Development defends the Trump administration's decision to remove guidelines from its website intending to prevent anti-LGBT discrimination in homeless shelters by arguing that transgender women accessing shelters makes people not comfortable. 
Again, Marionette, I, I would disagree inherently. I, I think that you can't prove that causally. You would need to actually have data. Um, I feel like this is a good definitional conversation for later. Yeah, I would be it, fine talking about it in a larger thing, but let's move yeah, on. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just kind of over minor definitional things right now, so... Um, President Trump nominates Brett Kavanaugh to the U.S. Supreme Court. I refuse to pronounce his name correctly. Seat made vacant. Uh, made vacant by the retirement of Justice Anthony Kennedy. Uh, Kavanaugh what has an extreme conservative record and has support, of, has support of Southern Poverty Law Center's designated anti chew Oh, yeah, he's on the Family Research Council. Lovely, or at least acknowledged that by was- him. Saying that the Southern Poverty Law Center, Center calls them a hate group. Calls them a hate group. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to be clear here, if you need information on various hate groups, the Southern Poverty Law Center is where to look. You can look at their website. The Department of Justice writes a brief to the Supreme Court saying that, you know, with Title VII, they can discriminate against transgender employees. Let's see what happened in 2019. Um, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, uh, or what I like to call the Wicked Witch, Refused to say that the record, whether or not she opposed discrimination against LGBTQ people in schools during a House committee meeting. Yeah, yeah, because she's a monster. No joke. Um, President Trump congratulated Brian ha- uh, Hagedorn, an anti-LGBT activist who wanted to ban LGBTQ children from schools and believes in discrediting attacks again on LGBT Americans for winning elections. Wow. Wow, 19 was 19's going on for a minute. A lot of stuff going on here. I'll post this with the links, but you got to understand this. Like Trump did incredibly awful shit. We'll do a couple in 20 and then we'll move on. The Trump administration's Department of Justice files a statement of interest in the U.S. District Court for the uh, District of Connecticut, which states that it has significant interest in ensuring that Title IX of the Education Amendments Act of 1972 is interpreted as excluding transgender female athletes and applying only to cisgender females. Do you guys get this yet? Like, when people go, why were why were why were me- members of LGBT uh, the LGBT community so terrified under Trump? Because this is what moralistic fascism looks like. It is systematically taking apart every protection, every system of defense, every way in which we should be treated as equal members of society away. So I need you guys to understand this, and this will be printed with the links, but let's let's kind of end this one on this one. I need you guys to understand very clearly. Trump was one of the worst presidents we've had, and I am including him compared to someone like George W. In my opinion, Trump was a constant erosion of rights and damages to this country, the likes of which hasn't been seen since Reagan. The only difference is, is Reagan was more calculated, surgical. This was just waving a hand and making shit happen. This stuff is toxic. It is awful. It is terrible. And so I just, I just want you guys to understand very clearly that this is, this is the stuff we fight against. But also, if anyone, whether it's a family member or any other person, ever says to you, Trump wasn't that bad on the LGBT, I want you to grab that article link and shove it up their ass. You have any other thoughts? Um, I don't ever like to leave you guys with like no way to deal with this stuff. Um, I think the more vocal we can be, the better. True. Um, figuring out how to get in touch with your elected politicians is always good. Um, and that can be things, you know, as simple as writing letters or making phone calls. Yes, I know we hate that, but you know what? It works. Um, you know, and I think absolutely finding our communities. You know, I think that's got to be the other one. Because in this, we've got to figure out how to take care of ourselves, too. So, yeah. Rosanna, as a final thought, it depends on how you frame it. If you blame Trump for every death that's happened under COVID because of his mismanagement, at some point, this is just going to kill more people than, AIDS, than the AIDS epidemic did in the 80s. That's just the the math on it. If we're losing 1,500 people a day, that's just going to be a thing. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. But again, we know COVID negatively affects. Yeah, this is why you always vote. Fuck yeah. Anyway, love you guys. Um, I was going to say Turbo. Oh, go ahead. I, I'll, we'll post a link for TurboVote that 
goes for anywhere in the country. You can sign up, get reminders. They will send you like, hey, here's who's on your ballot. If you need help figure filling out absentee ballots, you, they will print one off with the information that you filled in. It's super easy. We'll post a link for them too, okay? What is your advice for LGBT living in deep red states where change is next to impossible? Leave. I'm serious. Like, I thought about this. I thought about this as much as I can. And here's the problem. I think cis allies and activists should be in those states to help push those states over. But in my humble opinion, if you are part of a marginalized group, I see no ethical dilemma in between choosing to stay to fight and hopefully making it better and leaving and saving yourself. Those do not collect connect to me as one as better than the other. They come down to a number of factors that have to be assessed for you. Who is under your charge? Who needs to be taken care of? Like, no, no, your your personal safety needs to come first. If they can't due to financial issues, then what I would say is make strong connections to your local LGBT community. Try to find ways to connect with the queer community. Yeah. Um, yeah. As TMS said, changing idea, uh, environment is ideal, but if the expense doesn't allow it, you're going to need to find connections. Community is the way you build that. This is something I agree with Demon Mama on is by connecting with community and the people around you, finding people who are allies, you do strengthen that. You do make your, put yourself in a better position. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, large cities around those places will have resources. They may still be doing um, events online. And that's who I would get in touch with is try to, you know, strengthen those connections is look for those groups around you. Um, yeah. So. Also, seek therapy, look for support groups, uh, find Discord groups like our channel or other mm -hmm. ones. Uh, Demon Mamas is really good. Um, God, uh, Merrick's channel is pretty good. Mer Merrick's channel's Discord is pretty good, etc. Lux Andrews is really nice, etc. So, like, just, just find connections. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, with medical research constantly defunded, how are we even maintaining medical over me medicine overall? That's Luck a in a question. dream? I don't know. I I keep hearing there's supposed to be estrogen. Um, there's, I mean, every so often there's Yeah, an there's going to be an estrogen <laughs> shortage. I haven't hit that yet, but I don't know. We've been warned by uh, the doctor to... Uh, stockpile. Stockpile that stuff. Um, so Not a bad plan with everything, so... We can talk more about this in larger things, about how to create community. I think that'd be a cool segment for later, but let's end this here. Mm -hmm. Love you guys. We'll see you in the next Love one. Love you all. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. You can also ring the bell if you want to be notified of our videos. Um, if you want to help the channel, you can donate at streamlabs.com slash transgirltherapist slash tip. You also can uh, become a patron at patreon.com slash transgirltherapist. As low as $3, you can support our channel. Thanks for watching.